Okay, so here's the deal. There's a lot of buzz about Adobe and whether or not um, they have the right to, you know, spy on your pictures and use it for their AI purposes and so on and so forth. But here's the thing is they don't allow us to utilize the things that we want to use. So, uh, for instance, if you do boudoir photography or um, not safe for work content, uh, which is the new buzzword, the AI doesn't allow you to edit those pictures. So today I'm going to give you a quick workaround. Now, obviously on YouTube, I can't show nudity. So I've already censored the, the picture, but what you'll see is a workflow and then if you need to use AI to fix some things, like in this picture, it's a, it's not even a picture I would ever actually edit, but it was one that does show some nudity right off the bat. And if I needed to change the angle of the picture, crop it a certain way, and generative AI was to uh, fix it, it would come up with a message saying, sorry, you're breaking the rules, you can't edit it. But they're breaking the rules by scanning our computer and using all our images, you know, whether they're not safe for work or the pictures of your kids, it doesn't matter. Um, so I'm going to show you some workarounds. Um, for one, uh, you could you could take this picture and have it not censored there, but you can make a duplicate of the picture you're working on. Don't change anything, censor out, either blacken out the uh, nudity or like what I've done, put a censor tag there. More than likely, you'll still get um, some, some issues unless you totally blacken that, which uh, I can show you some workarounds around that. But anyway, so here's the deal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to first go to the crop tool because I, I didn't get this centered. I didn't get, um, you know, I'm not using any rule of thirds or anything like that. I am literally just, um, it was just a quick snapshot getting ready for the actual shot. But, oh, so what I was going to say is sometimes say there's this address on this building or something like that. This is where you'd use generative fill to get rid of that. But if there's any nudity here, it will, um, it'll freak out. So, I've censored it. It may or may not freak out. Let's find out. Let's let's see what it does here. I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna hit generative fill, generate. Just hoping it'll remove. It may give us a message, it may not. Let's find out. Do, 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 do. No, it did it because I did censor. But see, if I didn't have this sensor here, it wouldn't have taken that out. And same with this piece here okay. allow me to choose it I'm gonna do the same thing but I like the essence I like that uh, my wife here is framed I like the contrast and colors this picture if in the set I've done a whole set of these um, where we shot kind of downtown um, and, and we didn't just flash and stuff like that. It was very calculated. But you take this and, you know, like I said, this picture here is actually kind of a hard one to salvage. It's not something I would normally use. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop those down. It did a good job of getting rid of those things in the doorway. We don't need the address. Those are a distraction. You can get rid of door locks and stuff like that, too. I'm not going to go into that for this detail. I just want to show you how to trick. Um, Adobe. So here's another thing is I don't like the crop. Um, I think a lot of times we will, as photographers, we'll shoot something and then later on go, man, I should have tilted my camera this way or I didn't get a good horizon or whatever. Now, if you had any nudity in your picture, even doing this recrop, which I just did, would it would come up telling you no we can't do it and uh and battle it so you can go and, and crop this out and then 
as long as you're not doing any like color changes at this point or anything like that anything as long as you start with the generative fill stuff you could censor that and then go back to your original and uncensor it and line the images up but um so i'm gonna click yeah generative expand and it's gonna add to that doorway it, it may still not be right yet but it's gonna do it because i've put a sensor bump over it now like i said sometimes you gotta do more than that so if for example if you look at my wife's face here like uh, her chin her head's back funny it's kind of giving her a weird double chin and stuff like that a lot of times i would go in with jim to fill and i would select i'm just going to do it here even though we've censored it but you could do this on your own you could select here and hit generate and say remove double chin or you could say smooth skin whatever um it may or may not do this now this is yeah i mean ai is controversial no matter what oh there we go when you encounter an issue with your result please uh, view our, our guidelines, blah, blah, blah. Because it's seen that she's got breast tissue here and stuff like that. It's pretty silly. Um, that would be an issue. But let's say this was all uncensored and that's the message you get. So what I do is I'll select a piece of the image. This is where the actual tutorial comes. I'll select a piece of the image. Oops, somehow it's okay with me. Select an actual image, copy. And then I'll hit new. I'll just pull up the new window and paste that in. Now, if I go in, it may or may not still work, but we're gonna get, give it a try. So, go here, generate. I didn't put anything in the box because I think it, I don't know what I want to do. Uh, no, still, uh, view guidelines. So, because of this, it doesn't know what I'm looking at. So, what we'll do to get it to know is we won't save that one and we're going to zoom out a little bit and now we're going to actually include my wife's full face in that just show you how temperamental adobe is and they think they're protecting somebody but they're actually not protecting anybody because uh, it's slowing down a workflow and the whole point of generative fill is to help with your workflow so now that i have her whole face in there and oh, by the way, in this file, I just leave this selected. Don't deselect that. But now that I have this, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the lasso tool. Select there, generative fill. First we'll do it without saying anything. See what it does. And see there it did it because it sees her whole face and it doesn't see any nudity. What it's doing is it's sending this whole image up to a, a smart computer or somewhere, or in this case, I think a dumb computer, and it will um, edit, you know, through the internet, basically. It's not doing it on your computer like you would do. So from here, obviously it gives us three choices. I think that last choice works good. Just kind of smooths her chin out. Um, that's really approximately what my wife would look like if she, didn't you know miss pose or whatever uh, so I'll, I'll flatten that down and then I'll copy this and I go right back to this granted this area is still selected and I just paste it right there it's exact as long as you leave it there it's exact and you look like her hair looks the same everything it just smoothed out the skin I'm gonna smooth out the skin did make her hair strand a little longer and stuff like that you know that's acceptable I mean we don't need to get crazy. We're not trying to change the person in it. We're just trying to fix the pose. And I could do that over and over and over again with different things. Like for instance, the way her little skirt is down here bunched up, it kind of makes her look frumpy. I could go in and it, it may do it, it may not do it. Let's, let's find out. We'll go here, we're gonna do the same thing, generative fill. And since she's censored here, you know it's it's no big deal now where it will be a big deal is if you uh, literally try that it works so uh, it'll be a big deal if 
you change the dimensions of the picture. If you're just moving it and cropping it in, you could uh, easily replace with old stuff. And then once you have the look, so once you have the look here, you will be able to um, go in and um, do color grading or whatever. I'm going to say that this looks pretty good. I mean, for argument's sake, let's see what I can do. So, that's a little bit better. I think that looks good. So, we'll do number two. I'm just going to follow it back down. Now, obviously, I can't take the sensor thing off because of YouTube sensibilities. And also, you know, I do believe that stuff like this should be adult content, not child content. But what happens with Adobe sometimes is if you have somebody in lingerie fully clothed or a swimsuit or what it even perceives as the folds of the skin could be something else. It'll give you that message over and over again. So what I propose to trick it is edit in chunks on here. So take and uh, select an area. So I'll just do it here just for argument's sake, like what we did on our face and just copy, open up a new window and fix it. Don't do that on any of the areas that um, are nude or perceived as nude because what will happen is you'll get that message and you'll get frustrated and you'll never get the picture edited. Uh, I don't really need to do anything else here except for um, I, I still don't like the crop. It's not exactly where I want to be. So what I'm going to do, uh, I think if we move right down over just a bit, just bring this crop, oops, bring this crop in just a touch tighter. I'm going to try and try and center her up, but I got kind of a Dutch tilt happening with this door, or at least a perception of that. Technically, my camera is tilted and nothing is straight, but, um, yeah, I think somewhere in this ballpark would work. I'm going to hit OK, and it should fill in um, the generative expand parts, and even though they're low res, the, um, oh, nope, see, it perceives new. It just says, you know, we've encountered problems, blah, blah, blah. It's okay because I, I, I'm close enough. I can do this and without using the generator. We can uh, just go to regular crop. So, uh, we can go. which is funny. It let me do it earlier, but uh, with the other censorships that we've done, it wants to be strange. So, if you get to this point and you're like, okay, well, now what do I do? It won't let me do it. Uh, the old way of doing things still works great. Content aware fill. I'm going to just get this Dutch tilt back. I think that's pretty good. And yeah, we'll just we'll call that good. So this happens on your computer. So doing content aware fill, sometimes it's a little much. Um, if you got lots of different patterns that are drawing your eye in different angles, it's not going to be exactly what you want, you know. Uh, but um, in a pinch, if you're trying to get something uh, edited on the fly or whatever, maybe you have a client that you did a boudoir set for and you need to, you know, you don't want to spend a whole lot of time on something. So you need these cropping tools and stuff like that. Don't be scared to mix between generative fill and uh, content aware fill. Uh, when you get the error messages, content aware fill works great. Or like I said, once you have um, something right so you you get the cor correct crop and everything but you don't like everything you could censor an area or, or copy it censor an area go back and use generative fill along the outside and say hey you know reframe or um, you could put um, you know add trees or whatever is in your your desire you know ex extend background whatever and as long as you censor that area really good you'll be fine then copy that paste it back over and then erase the sensor part as, as long as you did change the frame at that point you're going to be fine so anyway just a quick little tip to show you how to do this this picture here uh i'll probably actually now that we've gotten this far i'll probably take and um, do a version like this but you'll notice that we got rid of the address you know it's very nondescript 
and if I paste this in over uh, the picture of her, I can get rid of uh, the sensor mark very easily. Uh, I corrected her little double chin that she had. That was one of those things that would annoy you as a photographer, but also not impress the model. And you know, that stuff happens on the fly when you're out doing shots and take you home. Sometimes the shot you like has something that you don't like in it. So that's where you could use generative fill or expand or any of that to, uh, to fix things that uh, you didn't get in the camera. Now, you don't want it to be a fake picture. Don't go in and, and do all that. Don't be mad at Adobe for trying to censor, but you can go and uncensor them by taking pieces of the image instead of the whole image, you know? Especially if you're working on the face, you're just trying to get like the skin smoothed out or you're trying to get um, like what I did, remove kind of like the perception of a double chin. That is easy, easy to fix as long as you just take a chunk out of it. Now, oh, you could also do the reverse of this. And once you have everything edited and um, the skin tones correctly, like this doesn't have the skin tones right kind of thing, but um, everything's smoothed out and, and you're just at that final stages, you could go back in and do exactly what I did. And it might, may even be easier because um, uh, you, you've gotten everything kind of to that 90% mark and um, you don't have to recreate the wheel. This is a quick and easy way to basically tell Adobe, I, I'm paying you for the software. I'm gonna use it the way I need it. Now, it's not giving you permission to have them edit your porn images, but what it is getting you to do for that fine art, because a lot of nude stuff is fine art, Adobe doesn't want you doing that. So we're going to just circumvent Adobe's uh, smart AI and uh, scanning your image and we're just gonna let it scan a piece of the image. All right guys, that's it. Um, stay tuned, I will edit this picture and I'll put the, the end result and the, the beginning result. And I'll just blur out the, the nudity, but um, yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you want more tips and tricks, hit me up, shoot me a message, drop a note down below, like, subscribe, all that stuff. I would really like to help you guys in any way possible, whether it be with the photography aspect or the aspect of the, you know, once you're sitting down at the computer and doing the editing part, because, you know, some of us can be really great photographers and not great editors. Some of us can be crappy photographers and fixing editing. Let's try and be good at both. And uh, all I need to know is what you want to see. All right, guys. Peace.